Hi, Stephen Travers here. Perspective is all about how something looks from a particular angle. Foreshortening is one of the words we use to describe the change in how things look because of the impact of perspective. It's important for everything we draw, but it's particularly important when we draw buildings because buildings often have very regular patterns of, of, of components and elements and squares and boxes. And so if we don't get it right, it can be really obvious. So that's what we're looking at in this video. At the end, I'm gonna have one of my foreshortening drawing technique tips that I use every time. So please um, stay tuned for that or jump to the end if you have to, to make sure you don't miss that. And if you find this video helpful, please hit like, please leave a comment, please subscribe. Okay, let's go. So for our example here, we have two walls of a square room and there are five windows on each wall. The windows are all the same size, they're the same width and they are spaced equally apart from each other and that's the same on both walls. Now we know that this wall is a rectangle even though it doesn't look like a rectangle if we were just to cut out this shape. But we know that the shape is actually change because of the effect of perspective because we know that the top line and the bottom horizontal line that perspective means we, we draw these lines out to a vanishing point possibly even off the page and that that affects how it appears to us from this particular viewing point. What I want to focus on now is the way that that change in the shape of this rectangular wall actually affects everything that is that is on that wall every architectural element that is on that wall. And so that's what we're gonna look at now. So we'll just look at this, this wall, for instance. So here we have five windows and they're equally spaced. So we want to find the center of the wall to see the effect of foreshortening. Okay, so the center window is gonna be this third one. And if we draw a line roughly down the middle of this, it comes down here. Now, the most obvious thing we can see is that it's nowhere near the middle of this space nowhere near the middle of this space. And to make it a bit more apparent, I've just um, made it clear here what's happening. So here we have, uh, from, from our appearance point of view, from where we're standing down here looking at this wall, we can see that the center line is actually two thirds of the way along this shape, this rectangular shape or four-sided shape that we're looking at. So halfway is not halfway. Why? Because foreshortening means that as this wall slopes further and further away from us, the wall becomes more and more compressed, which is much more obvious to see, not so much from the wall as from architectural elements that are on the wall or in the wall, in this case, the window. So the wall and everything on it becomes compressed the further away it moves from us, okay? And that's why on this wall, it's, it's the same thing, but the compression is even faster because this wall, because of the angle, is actually moving further back from us than this wall is. This corner is further away from us than this wall, so the compression is greater. And if we were to measure the halfway point along here using the windows as our guide, we can actually see that that, that halfway point comes down more like three quarters of the way along rather than than two thirds of the way along. So this is the effect of foreshortening. As surfaces move further away from us, the shapes are compressed and the detail on them is compressed as well. And learning to get this correct is really important if we want to draw these architectural uh, subjects. Okay, so why does it work this way? This becomes easier to understand if we just zoom up and look straight down for a moment. Okay, so we've zoomed up above our room. We're looking down, straight down onto it here. We can see the corner here that we're now looking and we can see that the room is angled away from us. Now, just to simplify things, I've reduced the windows from five down to three on each side. So that the windows are these spaces in between the line that represents the wall. And this is where we are. We're the viewer down here looking, looking at this and I've, put on this uh, a representation of, of various sight lines that we'll have a look at now. 
And this is just to indicate how from standing in this spot and looking towards our wall, our position changes. And as we look from this corner to the right, what we're seeing gets further and further away from us. These lines get longer and longer and longer. And as we said, as, as something gets further away from us, the effect is to compress it. So the effect is that these gaps, as we go along the wall, become less and less. And you can see how, how it works here, where I've just drawn these lines here to represent the width, the apparent width of the windows from this viewing point how the sight angle gives it the appearance that these windows are compressing, as well as the gaps between them. If we look to the left-hand side, we, say this, we see the same thing as working, except the windows, even though they're the same widths as the windows on this um, other wall, the windows are compressed even more. And the reason for this is if we look at these sight lines, we can see that this line is quite a bit further longer than this line. And remember, the further away something becomes from the viewer, the more compressed it becomes, the more extreme, if you like, the foreshortening becomes from this perspective. And this really is why foreshortening happens. So that if we have a long wall, if this wall kept going out to here, these windows would become, in effect, more and more compressed. If we took this wall out to here and brought it back here, the wall would only look a bit longer, wouldn't look hugely longer to double in size. And we'd have to compress all that detail. And that would happen even more so on this wall. In fact, it might become really difficult to even draw the detail up the far end. And when we're drawing, they're the sorts of decisions we have to make. Is it possible to draw the detail or do I need to just suggest it? So this is how foreshortening works. And so getting that detail correct in our drawings, getting that accuracy there, will really give our buildings a look of reality and our architectural scenes look like a, a real snapshot of what's there. So let's have a quick look at just two architectural drawings I've done to see how this looks, how this works when we're doing proper drawings and not just these, these little um, symbolic drawings for uh, perspective videos. Okay, So here we have one of my drawings of part of the facade of the Musée de Louvre in, in Paris. And I just want to focus on a couple of things. One is on these windows. We can see here's a row of windows, these windows. We know that they're all, in real life, they're all the same size, that they're all equally spaced. But if we look and compare the first and last, we can see that there is a big difference in the width that I've drawn them here. And that's foreshortening at work because this window is further away from me than this window as I view this scene with my camera. Um, and so we see, we see not just perspective, but we see foreshortening that the windows are compressed as they move further away from me. We see the same thing happening in these columns here. If we compare this column with this column up here in the corner, we can see that this one is thinner than this one. It's not just that they become shorter with perspective, but they become narrow as well. And the space between them shortens as well. So the space here is, is only half the size of the space here. And again, let's just look at this row of statues on top here. We can see that not just do the statues become shorter with perspective, if we compare this one with this one, even though they're all roughly the same size, we can see that I've actually drawn this one shorter than this one the space between them also decreases. And as I said, these are the, the little details that we need to get correct when we plan our drawings and when we, when we put these details in. Our second example is an interior scene in the Palace of Versailles, and this is the Prince's Staircase. And foreshortening is working in many of the elements here, although it's an interior scene, it's, it's a long space, and so there's room for, for foreshortening to happen. And the first spot I'd like to set, uh, point it out is here in the ceiling. These, these coffers are, are richly decorated, and they're really a key part of this, this whole scene, and therefore this drawing. And along the base of these beams 
there is a lot of carving work and the carving is a repeated pattern. Now this pattern is foreshortened. So if you were to look here, you can see where I've got, if you like, one repeat of this pattern. It's much larger than down here where it becomes a much narrower ellipse compared to what it is here. And again, up here, it's it's again, it's a very different um, shape because of the distortion from the viewpoint changes. And as as our view is compressed, as this rafter is foreshortened, so the decorative pattern carved into it foreshortens. And how much trouble you want to go to to represent that, of course, is up to every individual artist. But the more trouble you go to, even just suggest it, the more realistic our scenes will look. Uh, we look at we look at this balustrade here, and again these balusters, these individual supports of the rail along the balustrade, they're influenced by foreshortening. They they don't just become shorter as perspective goes along, but the their width changes and the gap between them changes to the point where the gap actually disappears as the viewpoint changes so dramatically. We can say the same thing about, about these, these square tiles. I mean, even the closest ones are not square, but the further away they go from us, foreshortening the compression of what we're seeing means that they become less and less like squares until they're finally just like little slits on the, on the floor up the far end. So here we see the effect of foreshortening on, if you like, more decorative interior elements. And it's our ability to, to see these that's important, I think. Okay, so that's foreshortening. Why do we have to learn all this theory? Why, why can't we just draw what we see? Well, we could, but in my experience, if we understand what's happening and why things appear to change shape, it actually makes it easier for me to see what's really there. And if I see what's really there, then I can draw it more accurately because it's harder to see what's really there rather than what I expect to be there. And because I know the windows are all the same size, it can be hard to not draw them all the same size, or at least to compress them as much as they need to be compressed. So understanding how foreshortening works, why it works, is really helpful in letting us observe. Now, what's my technique tip? Well, it's something I mentioned during the video, but when I'm drawing a wall that has foreshortened architectural elements, whether they're windows or columns, I always find the center one and I very accurately locate that on my drawing. I pay special attention to where each end of that wall is and then exactly from this angle where the center line is. And then I make sure I compress, particularly in the more compressed half, I make sure I compress all the elements that need to go in there. And if need be, I draw less detail so that I can actually get that compression right. And that creates a nice effect of that wall moving further away. If you look at some of my drawings that show more, more extreme examples of that, you'll see that. Okay, hope you found all this helpful. See you next time. Bye.